This is One on One. Vivian Green, Senior Curator, 19th and Early 20th Century Art at the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum. Welcome. Thank you. Good so to be here. talk about this Italian Futurism initiative, this exhibit. Uh, what is it all about, and why should everyone, be they Italian or not, care about this? Well, uh, it's going to be a big discovery, I think, for uh, people in the U.S. Italian Futurism was an Italian art movement uh, from the early 20th century through till about World War II, and it's Italy's great avant-garde. If you think about Cubism as being France's big modern movement, this is Italy's equivalent. Uh, there has never been a large-scale exhibition on Italian futurism in the United States. There have been in Europe and especially, of this course, in first. Italy. This is the first large-scale, yes. There have been smaller exhibitions just on a part of futurism, the decade, uh, the few years from the teens, and also exhibitions focused on painting. But there's never been anything that looks at the full sweep of futurism, which goes from 1909 through about 1944, when its founder, Marinetti, dies. And there's never been an exhibition that looks at all the different media that the futurists worked in. So not just painting and sculpture, which is what we think about with an art movement, but design, photography, architecture, a lot of literature. It was a literary movement before it was an artistic movement. There are more futurist writers than there are artists. Let's take, first of all, how much of Guggenheim are we talking about taking over here? It will be a full rotunda show, which means all the ramps spiraling all the way up will be part of the exhibition, as well as two of our side galleries, the tower galleries, mm. that are part of the newer building that Wathmi Siegel did. So the full Frank Lloyd Wright rotunda and then two large galleries. Vivian, let, let's go back a little bit. You mentioned several different areas mm -hmm. of this Italian futurism initiative. Let's, let's identify a couple of areas and, and break it down with a couple of concrete okay. examples. You talked about the literary piece of it. Mm -hmm. All right. So futurism, uh, Italian futurism, because there were futurisms in other countries, begins in 1909 when a man named F.T. Marinetti writes a manifesto, which he called the founding the manifesto, manifesto meaning this is the document that sets the direction yes. for moving forward. Yes, a declarative. It's a declarative. The manifesto, this was exactly. a different manifesto. Declarative uh, document that yes. states the main points of this art movement, cultural movement, which he's essentially inventing with document. Then they went on to write many more manifestos that become much more specific. Manifestos on literature, on yes. painting, on dance, on politics ceramics, you yes. name it, they do it eventually. But they also wrote uh, experimental novels, and they also uh, devised a form of free-form poetry called Parole in Libertà, or Words in Freedom, which was not just words on a page, but typographically experimental, so a bit like a rebus. There were images and letters, and they played a lot on onomatopoeia, and uh, that was a very important aspect of their work. It was published in journals. They published a lot of different kinds of magazines, which also allowed them to disseminate the futurist message across Europe and even beyond. How much of this was political? Everyone loves to ask that question. Well, uh, I'm fascinated yes. by the whole question. So it depends on the time Because period. Italy, so political. Right. It is. It still is. And uh, Not that there aren't enough political parties there. Yeah. <laughs> That's another always, story. Well, because Italy, there have always been a lot of political parties. Right. Because it's, it was a, it's really a nation of regions. It's and, not really a country, right. per se. Right. Exactly. It, it, it becomes a country unified in 1860. But in fact, one of the big political uh, sort of issues that involves the futurists early on is uh, World War I, and they wanted to, Italy to join World War I, as did many Italians, because right. the Austrians still had control of some Italian land, because Italy had been, prior to unification, under the control of France, Austria, Spain, right. et cetera. So they were interventionists, meaning they wanted to intervene into the war and reclaim these lands that were called irredentist As lands. opposed to isolationists. <laughs> right. Go ahead. So, um, so yes, they wanted to, to intervene. Uh, in terms of the war theme, uh, they also saw war as a way to sort of destroy and recreate, metaphorically, not literally, uh, culture. Again, going back to the idea that the, they saw the past as something nostalgic and old-fashioned, and they wanted Italy to catch up with the rest of Europe and be a modern industrial country and a powerful one. And 
since war is such a powerful theme, particularly in Europe during this time, the impact of World War II on the futurism or the futuristic movement would be? Well, by the end of World War II, the futurist movement has expired as well, and its leader dies in, in 44. Uh, leading up to World War II, I mean, this is one of the sort of problematics with futurism, and I think one of the reasons why maybe exhibitions have focused more on the teens and not on mm. the post-World War I time period is that there are connections between futurism and fascism. There are connections between any cultural movement that is, exists in Italy in the 20s and 30s and fascism, of course, because by especially the 1930s, the fascist regime dominates everything you do. But, uh, Mussolini my, a part of this? Uh, well, because Impossible he's the leader to, of right? the fascist, he's Il Duce, the leader of the fascist regime. He and Marinetti know each other. They and do. They're, they're friends they in close? the teens. It's a very complicated relationship. And when Mussolini marches on Rome in 1922 and sort of claims Italy for, for what becomes fascism, Marinetti breaks away. And it's not because his ideals are necessarily left, less right wing, but he disagreed with some components of what Mussolini wanted. It's a very, it's, it's not a black and white situation. Uh, by the way, the title of the exhibit is? It's called Italian Futurism, 1909 to 1944, Reconstructing the Universe. And it opens February 21st, and it goes through September 1st of 2014. I imagine going over to Italy and trying to get some of this stuff had to be fascinating in and of itself. <laughs> yes, it was, I made many trips to Italy, and everyone always says they're very jealous. And I say, well, it's a, yeah, it's a, a little, little more complicated than a little that. More, but I have to say that uh, the exhibition has uh, close to 400 objects in it, if you count everything, every teacup, and uh, about 70 lenders, many of them private lenders. And I really got to know a lot of co colleagues at museums and also collectors. And I like to say at this point, 70 people have my cell phone number and call me when they want because I. I really befriended everyone, and it, it, there's a lot of trust that goes into putting together an exhibition like I this. I cannot imagine how hard this has been, and we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Uh, plug it again. The name of the exhibit is? Italian Futurism, 1909 to 1944, Reconstructing the Universe. At the Guggenheim Museum? Yes. I want to thank you very much for thank being you. green, for coming in. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Uh, stay right there, folks. This is One on One coming to you from the Tisch WNET Studios right here in Lincoln Center. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan, TD Bank, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, Cone Resnick, and by PSENG. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been made possible in part by Celgene.